and welcome back to another bi-weekly news roundup. My name is Molly and this is brought to you by 35MMC. This video brings together all of the latest news stories that we have shared in the past two weeks. I'm gonna do an overview, but if you wanna read the full news story in detail, then head over to 35mmc.com, go to the news and events section, and you'll find all of the stories there. I will also link all of the individual stories down below in the description. All right, let's kick it off. So we made a 2023 holiday film photographer's gift guide, uh, which I thought was pretty fun because it basically features all of the latest products that have come out in the last year or so. If you're not broke from Black Friday or buying Harmon's new Phoenix film, then check it out. <laughs> so then we did a, another camera reviews from the film photography blogosphere, uh, another roundup of really cool bloggers that write about different cameras, um, so there is another one of those that you can check out. Blogs are not dead. <laughs> then we have Dimitri from Analog Cafe. Dimitri runs Analog Cafe. It's a website and a blog and a web app. I mean, there's, it's got so much stuff on there. So definitely check it out if you haven't heard of it before. But him and Yvonne Hansen and Darren from Learn Film Photography on YouTube. Yvonne has her own YouTube as well. So those three kind of came together and they came up with the idea of um, how fun would it be to have a game where you can sort of test your skills identifying black and white film stocks. So Dimitri is a uh, software engineer, I believe, and he created this web app and it's called What the Film. And it's basically where you can go on and you can play the game and you can try and identify um, from photos what black and white film stock was used. And uh, I submitted a few photos and I tried it and I did really bad. <laughs> so I think it's a lot, it's a lot harder. It's hard. Black and white is hard because it all kind of looks the same. So if you want to try your black and white identifying skills, then head over to the link below in the description and check out the game. Yvonne and Darren also did YouTube videos of this on their respective YouTube channels as well. So you can check that out. I believe Yvonne is just Yvonne Hansen, H-A-N-S-O-N. And Darren is at Learn Film Photography. And I'll link, I'll link those below. Uh, okay, so then the big news of the month was Harman Photo released Phoenix. And this is a ISO 200 color film. I'm sure you've seen this if you watch YouTube at all because loads of YouTubers released videos about it, including me. So if you wanna check out that video below, I'll leave that linked below. So everyone's videos were really good and they really showed the sort of varied results that people got with this film from different processes, different film labs, different scanners. So my results were scanned on a Fuji SP3000 at Analog Wonderland. If you look at on 35mmc, my review's up there, but if you look at Hamish's review, so Hamish also wrote a review, and his were scanned on a Noritsu. So you can kind of see the differences. I think the Noritsu is definitely warmer and the Fuji is definitely cooler overall. Um, so just bear that in mind that the scanning will impact the results a lot. Because it's a film made from scratch, totally from scratch, uh, made in the UK. It's a brand new color film. It's very experimental. This was the first batch and it's going to be a limited edition because it is the first batch. And then I think they're going to keep making batches, um, but they are accepting feedback from the community. So if you want to tell Harmon what you want in a color film, you can go to the Harmon Photo website. I will leave that linked below. And they have a feedback form where you can say what you like, because uh, they really want to know what people want. I think this first batch was like an experiment to see if it would actually work, and it did. Uh, and then they want to keep refining that and investing in that and making films that people want to buy. So definitely support them because there are limited film manufacturers. I'm waiting on Adox's new color film that they're working on. I mean, they have Color Mission that they made uh, years ago and they, they made it with a manufacturer as a batch, but now they're making it in-house. So they're trying, they're working on that color film in-house. I don't know what the status of that is. We haven't heard from them in a while. Orwo, of course, Invisicote, I think, made, manufactured some color film. Uh, which was pretty interesting. Uh, that was a little bit of a semi-disaster though, uh, the way that they sort of communicated and distributed it. Uh, if you wanna check out my video on that, I'll leave that linked below. Um, but yeah, so we've got Kodak, Orwo, Adox, and I'm, I'm not sure if I'm forgetting anyone else manufacturing color film. Um, please don't say Fujifilm. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, but yeah, let me know if I'm forgetting anyone. So it's really cool to see Harman Photo manufacturing color film from scratch. I think that is a huge positive step for the film 
industry. So they're also going to have some photo walks. So just double check their Instagram. I didn't see the events listed on their website, but I'm not sure if they're coming soon to that. Um, but check Instagram if you have Instagram because they're doing a few photo walks in different areas across the world. Um, some of them have already happened, if not all of them, but just double check. <laughs> Uh, okay, so we did a news article on Mint's latest update on their 35 mm. <laughs> I almost said 35 MMC on their 35 millimeter film camera. Okay, so there is a Spanish-speaking blog called Despera Film Blog, and they interviewed the founder of Mint, Gary, and uh, they talked to him about his latest project, the 35 millimeter film camera. This blog reached out to us and they said, "Hey, you want to share our interview with him?" So we took some pieces of that along with some pieces of the latest updates. So you can read the whole details um, below, but basically. <laughs> <laughs> getting to the the meat of the matter is that they're estimating the film camera will cost around 650 to 800 us dollars we already know it's got lidar autofocus um, i think they're in sort of the final stages of the prototype and they're aiming to get it out next year which is really exciting so if you don't follow mints updates already on their blog. I highly recommend subscribing over there. Um, I will leave the link down below. You can put your email address in to get into the portal uh, and then you can see all of the updates. And then when you put your email address in, that means that you'll receive future updates. Uh, so whenever Gary sends out a new blog post about an update with the camera, you will get it. <laughs> so so yeah, so definitely check that out below. And if you uh, if you do speak Spanish, then check out Dispera Film Blog um, because they've got so much there. And um, I believe they're also connected to a... Sorry, I'm just... <laughs> I gotta have my coffee because it's early. Because I'm doing this today. I'm recording this today. Uh, so I gotta then edit this and get it out for y'all. So if you speak Spanish, then head over to Dispera Film Blog. Uh, they've got loads of cool things there and they are even connected to a YouTube channel where I believe they also do news. So I highly recommend checking it out. So thank you to Despair Film Blog for inviting us to share the interview with Gary from Mint. After that, Jolly Look uh, launched a Kickstarter for a printer. Now Jolly Look works with Instax Film. They make, I believe they're pinhole cameras. Um, they make pre-assembled and DIY pinhole cameras from this beautiful wood material and they've done a Instax mini version. They've recently done an Instax square version and now they've done a smartphone printer. So basically it's, it's sort of like a boxy thing where uh, you just put your, you put your phone flat on, on like a flat surface and then you put the box thing over it and it basically takes a, um, a photo of the photo that's on your phone and it prints that on Instax film, which is super cool. It's a mechanical printer. It doesn't need any batteries or anything. So check out the Jolly Link Kickstarter below. It was only a seven day Kickstarter, so it's already over. But what they'll do is after they finish the Kickstarter, they'll make that printer available for regular sale. Maybe subscribe to their email newsletter if they have one for news updates on when it comes available for sale. For the third party lens fans in the crowd, Viltrox released a new compact full frame 20 millimeter F 2.8 lens for Sony E-mount. That's it, that, that's, that's, that's a short piece of news. Check it out in the link below. Other news that is not covered on 35 MMC. So there were a few pieces of news that we haven't gotten to covered yet. Ferrania released their Orto 50 in medium format in 120 version, which is super exciting. Uh, I'm definitely gonna order some when I get a chance and try it out. Adox got their 120 machine working. So this is their first like new again 120 film and it is their CHS2 and it is an ISO 100 speed film. Uh, so that's medium format. They got the machine working. Now, when I look back on their website for news of this to find more details, they had a blog post where they were talking about the 120 machine and how it, they were having sort of trouble getting it up to speed or, or getting it working or having issues running properly. Um, so it seems like they've figured that out, which is awesome. So if you want, um, if you're into black and white 120 film, you've got two new options to work with, ADOX CHS2 and Ferrania Orto 50. Then, uh, if you know the company Pinsta, that's basically like an instant development pinhole camera. So it's a pinhole camera and then it develops the paper 
that's inside. So Pinsta is working on an eight by 10 camera. They released an update on Instagram. So we are working on getting in touch with them to get more details for the news. Um, but I just thought I would share that tidbit now because it's quite exciting. I mean, the, the, if you haven't heard of Pinsta yet, go check it out, it's really cool. Then um, I just wanted to quickly mention straight eight entries. Now, we've done news about straight eight before. Uh, we had straight, we had Alex from straight eight at analog spotlight, which was really cool. Um, and I just want to quickly mention, I, we were, we were working on a news article The entries are closing earlier this year. So if you are interested in getting into straight eight, which is basically a super eight, uh, movie short film competition, it's so cool guys, <laughs> check it out. We'll leave the link down below. If you are interested in getting into that, the entries close. February 8th and February 21st are the two next deadlines and the price goes up the later the deadline. So if you enter February 8th, it's 200 for the entry fee, which includes all the processing, all the scanning. Um, it doesn't include the camera and the film. So you need to buy the camera and the film. Um, but then what you do is you shoot your film and you, you do the soundtrack and then you send that all raw to uh, straight eight and they process it for you. I believe they use the Cine Lab um, in London, which is an amazing lab. And yeah, so that's all included. And then if you wait until February 21st, the entry fee is 220 pounds. Okay, so a quick note, Double Film Treat is on sale. Double Film is having a sale on their treat film. They've reduced the price. And I believe they've reduced the price on maybe some other film as well. So if you like double film, this is a good time to check out maybe um, getting some more film or stocking up. Lomography has a new grape colored fisheye camera. Uh, we didn't get to cover this on the news, but I just thought it was worth mentioning because it does look really cool. And it's actually really nostalgic. It reminds me of Jolly Ranchers. I used to love the grape flavor. If grape is your thing and you've been wanting to get a fisheye camera, then check it out. I'll leave the link down below. Oh yeah, so something we did cover on the news recently is uh, the same Dimitri from Analog Cafe made a gingerbread instant pinhole camera. This is so cool, guys. Now, he did one last year that resembled a Polaroid SX-70 camera. It looks just like an SX-70. Uh, so this year he did a little bit of a different design and he made a sugar lens. Uh, and you can read all about it on um, the news and then you can also read about it on Analog Cafe. Uh, I think he's going to break it down soon and eat it with friends maybe. <laughs> so, uh, I thought that was a super fun idea. If you are interested in a gingerbread project, if you like gingerbread around this time of year, because this is the time for it, uh, then uh, you can check out his blog post on Analog Cafe. And I believe he put the whole recipe last, in last year's blog post, uh, which I have linked in the 35mmc.com news post. So if that interests you, check it out. It's really cool. It makes these really soft, dreamy images um, that you can kind of see what it is, uh, especially if it's up close. Um, but yeah, it's definitely, it's, it's a different look and it's a really cool project. So it just, it just, it's amazing how you can make cameras from things like that, <laughs> like sugar and gingerbread. So that's it for this week's news video. If you have any other news or tips, then leave them in the comments below or send an email to info at 35mmc.com. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.